Hi everyone, my name is Tobias. I'm a lecturer at the School of Geographical and Earth Sciences at the University of Glasgow. I'm going to talk to you about plate tectonics, which was a major breakthrough in how geologists understand Earth that happened about 50 years ago. We didn't always know about plate tectonics. In fact, in the 19th century, about 150 years ago, geologists thought that continents that stick out of the oceans and the ocean basins that are much deeper in topography are explained by the crust floating on the mantle like a cork bobs on water. And where it bobs up higher, it is either because it has a deeper crustal root or a lower density. And indeed, we now understand that the oceans are made up of basalt and uh, the continent are made up of granite that has a lower density. So the idea was that um, all of the observations of geology can be explained by things simply moving vertically up and down. About 100 years ago, towards the beginning of the 20th century, there was a gentleman named Alfred Wegener, which st who started to realize that if you put the continents of today together, along their apparently matching coastlines, you can show that they were at some point stuck together in one big landmass. And this theory was backed up by the fact that there are matching fossils found in many places in the world overlapping these apparent um, plate boundaries. And his idea was that somehow in time, these continents must have drifted apart. The geologists of his day did not like his idea and in fact thought that he was crazy. And so his idea of uh, continental drift did not catch on because people did not understand how continents can drift in the first place. We found out about how that is possible through two man-made tragedies of global proportions. The first one of which was World War II. During World War II, there was a lot of activity in the oceans um, for submarines, and therefore the seafloor was mapped in unprecedented detail. And there were two discoveries. Um, one was that there is a network of high topography ridges that span the entirety of the Earth's ocean basins, which were then called mid-ocean ridges. And it was then discovered that um, on either side of these ridges, there are um, parallel and matching stripes of inverse polarity of magnetic field that are spreading out. And so the concept of seafloor spreading was born that the plates might actually be pulled apart at mid-ocean ridges and new crust forms by magma coming up into the gap between the plates. Um, that explains how continents might drift apart, but there's not infinite space on the Earth's surface. And so there was still a missing piece of the puzzle of how plates can actually move towards each other. And uh, from the World War II, we transitioned into the Cold War, where unfortunately the world saw the advent of nuclear weapons. In order to keep taps on what everyone was testing around the world and to uh, detect early when there were new explosions, um, the big states of the world built uh, very dense seismic monitoring networks. What they found was that earthquakes on the world are not evenly spread around the world, but they're focused along sharp boundaries. And in some boundaries, as you can see, the one that is highlighted in the box to the right, these earthquakes are also found to transition from shallow earthquakes at one end of the boundary to its much deeper earthquakes at the other end. And so it was understood that in, on, uh, in addition to the divergent plate boundaries and the mid-ocean ridges where plates are pulled apart, there are also convergent plate boundaries where one plate is um, being pushed underneath another plate, causing earthquake stairs. And a third um, plate boundary was identified, a transform plate boundary, where plates are scraping horizontally past each, each other. But it was really the um, discovery of subduction zones in combination with the seafloor spreading we have just seen before that brought together the grand unifying theory of geology today, which is the plate tectonic cycle where oceanic plates are formed at mid-ocean ridges as the crust is pulled apart and new magma forms new crust. Um, and at another plate boundary, the same oceanic plate is then pushed underneath another one. And in that process of pushing a plate down, there is another kind of magmatism that then forms the continental crust, which um, forms high mountain ranges and pops out 
above the sea level to form dry land mass. And so it was really through these two big tragedies of World War II and the Cold War and the technological advances that they brought us that we discovered how the world works. If you're interested to learn more about questions like this, consider our um, geology degree that we offer at the University of Glasgow. You'd be most welcome to join us there. Thanks for listening.